played an insane game of duck chess against Eric Rosen. Eric is not only the creator who made it super popular, but he's also one of the strongest players in the world, with a rating of over 2300, which is really a lot for a chess variant. How to play? It's normal chess, same rules, but there is the duck, which is a brick, a blocker. Pieces cannot move through the square occupied by the duck, except the knight that can jump over it. Each move has two steps. After moving a piece, the duck must be moved to a different and empty square. There is no check or checkmate. You gotta capture the opponent's king. And we have the end shake. So one strategy of dog chess is to use the duck to block your opponent development. For example, here I cannot play e5. So I have to go with g6, the fianchetto, but I'm blocking the d pawn from being pushed. And so it's hard at the beginning to develop all your pieces because your opponent will always block one. For example, Herrick now seems a bit obsessed about this bishop not going to g7. And I am obsessed about not making him push the d-pawn. So I have to find a different way to bring out my pieces. And that's why I play e6 to go out with the knight. Now the bishop goes to fianchetto and he's still... He, he was thinking, should I block the bishop? Should I block the knight? He went for the bishop. And now I cheated. <laughs> Have you seen that? I think now I look at the camera and I say, oh, I'm a such a cheater. Can you read labial? <laughs> yeah, I think I said it right now. Okay, Eric brings out the queen and still blocking the bishop. Thinking, I have to find a way to develop all the other pieces. Not so simple. Yeah, honestly, I don't remember the idea of c5. Probably to get some more space. And now he cheated. <laughs> he castled without moving to that. <laughs> he was super kind that he, he went back and then remade the move. But of course, this can happen. Now we are 1 1. Okay, I went out with the knight. Finally, nearly all my pieces are getting developed. But Eric has a bit more space. He castled already. And now you see, he's explaining a second strategy. He could block my bishop to go out, but instead, He's blocking the square where he wants to go next. At the next move, I'm forced to move the duck in another, in a different square, and so his knight can go to d6. That's why I have to play knight c8. If not, I'm nearly checkmated. And I move the duck away. So now if he goes on d6 with the knight, I can simply take it. So I luckily found a way to defend that threat. Yeah, now he's taking space and he's blocking my bishop, my queen, my knight. I don't remember what we were saying right now, honestly. Now I'm blocking the square. I don't want the knight to get there. And now he blocks my king from castling. That's very smart. Now I cannot castle. I have to find a way to get rid of the pressure because the knight on b5 is so annoying. I play this move, I'm attacking the knight and blocking the d6 square. So he has to go back if he doesn't want to lose the knight. And so he goes back, but he still blocks my king from castling. <laughs> yeah, I bring my knight back and I still block the d-pawn. No, I mean, I don't know where he's going with, my, with the queen. I mean, I'm looking at f7. I'm scared that I could get checkmated. Maybe, you know, knight g5 and queen takes f7 could be checkmate. That would be very annoying. I, I'm, unfortunately, there is no audio in this video because I'm a noob with camera and I record it in slow mode. Okay, now I go out with the knight and I block the d-pawn. Now Eric is... Whoa, that's a great move. g4 attacking my knight, taking space and blocking the d4 square. So I cannot go there with the knight and I have to go back home. I, I, I feel like my pieces have very little space. And now look, I still cannot castle and this knight is so annoying. I think now I'm doing some mind tricks. I'm confusing Eric. Moving my knight, blocking the d6 square. Now yeah, I'm still confusing him. And he goes to move the knight? What is happening to the queen? I ask him, you see? And he says, oh no, my queen. And then I'm thinking, I say, okay, is he bluffing me? What's up? But I take the queen. I say like... Okay, I have to take this chance. And then I block the f6 square, and now he says <laughs> that he blundered it. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god. But it's still not over. With those knights, my king is nearly checkmated. You see, I have just one square to go on e7. My king is about to be checkmated. So I move up and now I think like, okay, I will lose the bishop and maybe even the queen. Um, I'm a bit afraid. There is f7 hanging. The bishop is hanging. But okay, I see a potential check. No, he takes my bishop. And it is at this moment that I realize that I have a kick -a move. Look at this. This is dark mate. <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't believe that. I was so happy. And Eric was super kind that even if he was like sad that he lost the game, he was still taking it with a smile. Uh, this was honestly super fun and I'm honored that I won against one of the strongest dark chess player in the world.